Den Herring here. Welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365. Today we're going to be doing an unboxing, or maybe better wording, an unbagging. We have actually two different tackle suppliers that we're going to be going through here today. One is Jan's Netcraft, where you can order a lot of different lure making items. I ordered a whole lot of jig skirts, so I'll show you what we got there, and I've ordered some other items from Jan's. I've actually forgotten what I, everything that I've ordered. Has that ever happened to you where you've ordered some things, some tackle from a supply store, and by the time you got it, you, you forgot maybe a few things that you ordered? So we'll see what's in here. It'll, it won't only be a surprise to you, but it'll be a surprise to me too, apparently. And then the uh, just yesterday, I was at uh, Susquehanna Fishing Tackle with my dad and bought a few items at uh, their sale. They have their annual sale in March. They take a pretty good percentage off. I didn't pick up too many things. I was looking for some new lures, some new ideas, so I got a couple of those. I'll show those to you here. We'll share what we got and uh, let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is find the scissors so I can cut this bag open. Here it is. All right, so we'll take the items out of here one at a time. Oh, looks like a bag within a bag. Okay. So this is uh, just kind of preparing for the season and, and getting ready for the spring. And so a lot of the, my bait choices were baits that uh, are going to get me ready for spring. So a couple items here. First one is we have uh, a Zoom Trick Worm in bubblegum color. Look at that bright pink. That's a really oddball color you might think, but sometimes that color, it can be quite good for both largemouth and smallmouth bass. And oftentimes when you're fishing spring of the year, you fish a floating worm technique where you just put a hook in this. Basically, basically you just Texas rig a hook, no weight, you throw it out there and you fish it like a jerk bait. And that floating worm in uh, dingy colored water is really bright and you can see it real well and you can see when a fish overtakes it. So that's one of the advantages of, of using a color like that. Next up, we've got uh, a robo worm here. This is a, a four and a half straight tailer, <laughs> four and a half straight tail Ehler, Ehler's Edge worm. Ehler uh, is a uh, tournament fisherman and this is one of the colors that he has. Let's show this to you. Brent Ehler, he's a very good fisherman. One of the top guys out there. Ooh, I really like this. It's a really soft bait. You can see it's kind of got that shad blue color underneath. Hopefully you can see that and then uh, almost a green pumpkin on top. This is going to catch fish. Uh, this could be a really good drop shot lure. So we'll put this back in the package here. Keep them straight as we can. We want those tails to be straight. Next up, we've got uh, some Strike King baits. KVD Perfect Plastics here. These are... Uh, the drop shot uh, bait. These are half shells. Let me pull one out here for you. I got two different colors, green pumpkin, and I think they made a mistake and didn't get the right color, but that's okay. We'll, we'll fix that later. Anyway, we'll show you uh, green pumpkin purple here. Let me pull this out. So again, this is supposed to be a really good drop shot bait. It's called a Strike King half shell. And, uh, so this is green pumpkin with a little pur purple fleck in it. Should be a good drop shot lure. I think the small mouths will like it. And I got green pumpkin also. Next up, we've got some more Strike King baits. This is just the, their Strike King Dream Shot. Here's one called Ghost Shad. And uh, this really looks like a bait fish color you know almost clears like that smoke color to it uh, this is going to be another good bait to throw on a drop drop shot rig it'll be good all year long it'll be good right through the summer in the fall winter so looking forward to fishing that and then i got another one in kvd magic it's just a different color then i've got a bunch of these they're called turbo flare jig skirts let me pull one of these out for you we'll show it to you so I got uh, a bunch of black ones. You can see, let me uh, get these separated here. I think they come in five packs. 
But they have this, they're, they're already kind of set up to give you uh, a good profile. They have the, the, the rubber skirt that comes out here and then also uh, the, like a tail too. And so when I'm struggling on the jig bite and, and uh, green pumpkin's not doing it and my standard colors aren't doing it, I always go back to black. A black jig is always a good color and I oftentimes like to fish this with a brown trailer. A black jig with a brown trailer or a black jig with a green pumpkin trailer. It's a good natural look in the water, especially if you're trying to mimic crayfish. It's a good, good all around skirt to have. So I have a skirt box here. I'll be putting these in my skirt box. But that's one of the colors I got was black. Here's another pack of black. So I got two packs of five of black. I've got one here. This is called cinnamon purple. Same uh, type of skirt. Turbo Flare in cinnamon, cinnamon Purple. Then I've got some shad looking skirts. I like to fish in the spring. I like to fish shad colored jigs, meaning that have a lot of white in them. And especially in the lakes that I fish that have gizzard shad and alewife, the gizzard shad oftentimes are dying off. And uh, usually the first days out on the water, if I can't get them on a spinner bait, or if I can't get them on, on a swim jig, I'll throw a regular jig with a shad, a whitish shad skirt like this. This particular color is called Ghost Minnow. You can see it's got the white and it's got like some green pumpkin strands. So the white would be the belly and the top would be the green pumpkin. Just the same here, I got five of them. And uh, so these skirts, I find can be very effective. A white jig in the spring, I really like to fish when the shad die off is taking place. That's a secret that uh, I usually don't let a whole lot of people know about. So try it, you won't be disappointed. More of the same, got five more of those. This is a color that's a little similar called Gin Rin. It's got a little bit more color to it. I'll open that to for you here. So here's Gin Rin. It's got the white, it's got some purple strands and some pumpkin, green pumpkin in there. A little more color to it, but another good shad colored jig skirt. Got another one, the same thing. Another set of five. And then I got uh, some more here. This is called Blue Cross. So this is going over to more of a, a bluegill or, or crayfish type color. Let me show you this one. I think this is a good color too. I'm looking forward to using it. I don't have any of these today, but I do now. Oh, and these are the finesse ones. So there's also finesse turbo skirts. This is called Blue Craw. You can see the finesse turbo skirt has the very short uh, top and then, and then it's got the regular. So this, it actually goes on, if this is the head of the bait, it goes on this way. And so it's a more of a, for a finesse jig and this could be a good crawfish color. It could also be a bluegill color too. I like those couple strands of bright blue, not too many. That's gonna catch some fish. I like that color. All right, and then I've got uh, one other item in here, which is a Reaction Innovation Sweet Beaver and Corn Dog. I like Corn Dog. I like to have that chartreuse tail. I think that mimics a, a bluegill quite well because uh, if you ever look at a bluegill's fins and tail, oftentimes it's got that bright aqua color and it looks like it's glowing. Okay, corn dog. So then we've got um, more of the same. Blue craw, but in the regular skirt, not the finesse skirt, but same color that I just showed you. And then we have another one here in Cumberland craw. Let's show you what Cumberland craw looks like. This is another good crayfish slash bluegill color here, I believe. So you can see it's got some orange, it's got some uh, good bluegill color there. It's got some barbed wire type skirting material in there. It's gonna catch fish, it's a good skirt. Looking forward to trying these skirts on my jigs this year. And we got another pack of robo worms here. This is called Aaron's Pro Magic. So it's a, another uh, a good color that uh, Aaron Martins has. He's the guy who I think made the Robo Worm famous, fishing it on his drop shot. We'll open this up for you and show you this color in a little bit more detail here. 
So this is, you got Aaron's Magic and then this is Aaron's Pro Magic. So similar to that other one in that it's got that dark green on the back, but it's got whiter, a whiter belly. Uh, so it's got that shad profile. Good looking bait. Very, very soft worms. All right, so we'll put that over here. That's it for the Jan's Netcraft order. Let's show you what we got at Susquehanna Tackle next. Okay, so first up, we've got some more sweet beavers. That's not a sweet beaver, but these are some green pumpkin type colors here. These are always good baits. I like to get these beavers in different colors. Usually I'm looking to mimic bluegill and to mimic crayfish. This is uh, another Reaction Innovations lure here called a Man Bear Pig. It's similar to a Zoom Brush Hog, a little bit of a smaller profile, but it's a very good lure. And I look forward to fishing this this year. So those were the first things I picked up at Susquehanna. This is an interesting item I picked up from Susquehanna also. These are lead weights and they're pyramid shaped. They're three ounce. What I do with these is I put a big snap on here, a large snap. And if I'm fishing a lure and I get stuck on the bottom and I can't free it, one of the ways you free it is you do what you call a bow and arrow where you, you uh, pull the line and have the rod bend and then you let the rod, the, and then you let the line go and it snaps the rod back and sometimes it'll snap the bait right off the, right off the snag that it's on. But if that doesn't work, you can then put a snap on here, attach that snap to your fishing line and just drop this down and it'll just drop down into the water and it's got this pointy wedge shape because it's a triangle and it'll just go in there and oftentimes it'll free the hooks. It'll knock the hooks free and you can get your bait back and save you some money. So for the cheap price of lead, I always have a bunch of these on board with me in case I get stuck on the bottom, I can try and retrieve my bait uh, very easily and quickly. I have here a Lucky Craft Pointer 100 in misty shad color. I lost that color uh, last year or two years ago. I've had good success with misty shad, both in clear water environments and stained water environments. I believe it's a good color. I think it's a good shad imitator and it, it seems to catch a lot of fish for me. So misty shad is what that one is. And then I spent a little bit more money on the Mega Bass Vision 110, this Edo bait. This is a perch pattern. I think it's just called perch. Let's just see uh, if there's a color name on it. So uh, it's called GP Pro Perch. A very good colored bait. Hopefully you can see that through the box. Anyway, that's, uh, that's another one of these uh, more expensive jerk baits, but they work very well. And that color is fantastic. Anywhere there's perch, this is gonna work. Also got a Lucky Craft crankbait here. This is a Fat CB. BDS 3F in pearl thread fin shad. Great color there. I'm going to be using this crankbait at Wall and Paul Pack. It's going to be one of the better ones there, I believe. Can't wait to try it up there. Good color. Then I got something called a shock blade here. Basically, it's just a blade bait without any skirt on it. It's made by Picasso. I thought I'd buy one of these and then just put my own skirt on it and my own trailer and I'm ready to go. So just another uh, blade bait. I have several of these. This one I like, I'm going to pull this apart for you here, show you why I like it. Hopefully you'll be able to see this. So you can see it's got a snap here and it's got the blade. And then the blade is attached right to the, to the head of the bait. What you don't want is a large split ring between the head of the bait and the blade because as you start, when you start to retrieve it, it just takes a little longer for the, for the vibration to start. If you have a direct connection between that head and the blade, it vibrates as soon as you pull it or as soon as you begin reeling it. And sometimes that makes a difference. I got two more baits in here. This one is a Teckle. They're the ones that make the sprinkler frog. That became very popular last year. This one's called a Teckle Honker. And it's another frog bait. And I really like this color. Looking forward to throwing this in the pads this year show you this bait more closely. It's actually colored similar to a lily pad, but it's got that white belly. 
that whitish belly, not too bright white, and a little bit of red on it. And then it's got these, these blades as feet that actually look like little feet, but these will turn in the water as you're, as you're moving this frog through the water. These blades will turn. Also, you can hear that when they hit each other, they make quite a bit of, they make a ringing noise. If they hit each other in the water, they'll do the same thing under the water, and that can attract the fish too. Never fished this thing before, haven't even heard anything about it, but I like the design. You can make these on your own, by the way. I just decided to buy it. It was just saving time for me. The frog is soft. I like the softness of it. Feels pretty good. Let's see how those hooks are. See if they're sharp right out of the package. They are. They're good and sharp right out of the package. Maybe just a couple more. Uh, nah, they're good. I, I'd say they're fine just as is. I was going to say maybe just a couple of um, passes with a nail file, but they feel good. We'll have to see how it walks. It's got this nose down design, so I'm not sure what to make of that. And it's probably more of a bait that's meant to do this, which is fine. I, both work, both styles work. And, but I like the, this will be a little bit of a different look instead of having the skirt coming out the back or uh, it'll have these and uh, they're quite shiny. So uh, we'll see if that attracts fish or scares them. We'll have to experiment this with this this year in the warmer weather when that top water bite starts. Maybe I'll make a video just on this uh, and we'll give it a rating. And then one last bait that uh, was new to me, I've never seen it before. It's called a Grinch. And again, it's another type of bait that's meant to be fished in slop or, or lily pads. It's a top water lure, and, uh, but it can also go under the water too. Let me pull this out so you can get a closer look at it. It's got an upside down paddle tail. It's got a slender uh, frog body but it really imitates a small bait fish. So uh, let's get a look at this thing a little more closely. I've never seen one before. I don't know if they'll work or not, but I'm willing to give it a try. Always looking for something new, something a little different that the fish haven't seen. This has got a pretty good size profile to it, which is good for the lakes that I like to fish, like Nakamixon that have big fish. That way you're appealing to larger fish. And if I can just get it open, I'll show it to you. There we go. So uh, yeah, here it is. It's got, <laughs> the tail is actually a boot tail, but it's upside down. So I think the purpose of that, and it just kind of makes sense, is that that'll make more of a commotion on top. Imagine this thing floating, it's floating plastic. So imagine this thing floating on top of pads and weeds and, and you're going through the water. This thing will make a bit of more commotion as you're going through, theoretically speaking, of course, because I haven't tried it yet, but I will be trying it. The bait uh, pressing on this, it's not that soft. I don't like that. It's pretty stiff. So I'll probably try and work this out a little bit to make it softer uh, before I actually use it. The hooks feel sharp and they are, they are razor sharp. So the hooks are good, but uh, this bait needs to be a, a little softer to be a little more effective for when those fish grab it and bite down on it. I do like the angle of the hooks though and see how they're angled upward. So it won't take much for those fish to grab a hold of this and uh, and get that hook in them. Plus the way <clears throat> this bait is designed, you see it actually has a ridge in the bait. So the hook lays across that ridge. It's gonna be extremely weedless because of that. The hook is very tight against the body of the bait. You can see it separates the way when I do that, but when I do this, it goes right back to position. So this will be a very, very weedless bait. Interesting to give it a try. I'll have to give it a decent try and see how it works. Well, that was the last item I had from Susquehanna Fishing Tackle. There you have a combination. Susquehanna Fishing Tackle, Jan's Netcraft, a little bit of both from today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Any, com any questions or comments, please feel free to add them in the comments below the video. Looking forward to getting out in the water. We're certified bassified, and remember this channel is all about the art and science of bass fishing and fishing in general. Can't wait to get back on the water. Hopefully we'll see you out there, and may God bless your fishing endeavors.